It's Christmas! Hence the festive jumpers. So welcome to this festive edition of the Retro Gamer Show. So for this festive edition of the Retro Gamer Show, we decided to do something a little different and have a challenge. Yes, now the rules for the challenge were that you had to get something off of eBay, it had to be a retro gaming oddity, something you don't see every day. Of course, as it's Christmas, it had to be Christmas related. And if that wasn't hard enough, it had to cost under a tenner. Let the hunt begin. So I've spent a good hour or so trying to find the best Christmas oddity that I can. Come up with quite a few ideas. But I think I found, I think I've nailed it. I think I found the number one item. Now, one of the things I was gonna get, the Christmas Carol on the DS was one of them. The other one was the official Father Christmas game on the Commodore 64. But what I've gone for, I think, really is going to win this. So I'm done. So I've been here searching eBay for about probably an hour and a half, to be fair, looking for my retro gaming Christmas related oddity. And it's been quite a challenge. I think the £10 price mark made it quite hard. Uh, and the fact that I've been trying to find something that maybe James and you guys haven't seen before or haven't heard of. Uh, has made it extra difficult. Um, I think to begin with I was going to go down maybe the computer magazine route, maybe look for a Christmas special of uh, computer and video games or maybe Zap64 or Crash, but I was unable to find one of those. So then I started going down the more obvious route of uh, computer games. And I was thinking about the Commodore 64 version of uh, Santa's Christmas Capers. Anyway, eventually I decided not to go with Santa's Xmas capers because I remembered that James said he had it back in his Commodore Amiga days. So I know you'd have seen that, even though that was a 64 version. I knew you'd seen it on there and played it on the Amiga, so maybe it wasn't that much of an oddity. Uh, so I continued my search and eventually I came across this Crash magazine compilation tape. And uh, it was a Christmas special from December 1989. I presume it was probably given away with the magazine. It may have been a retail release, but probably, I think, given away with the magazine for Christmas 1989. And apparently it had six top-notch Spectrum games on it from the likes of Ocean, Codemasters and Mastertronic. But anyway, eventually I decided not to go for that, maybe to just search a little bit harder and a little bit deeper. And uh, I come up with what I actually think, pardon the pun, is an absolute cracker. And uh, I've ordered it, and hopefully the seller's going to get it on the way to me soon. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a clue, it's 
sort of a game but it's not a game so uh, so you can make out what you will from that and uh, both hopefully I say the seller's going to get it in the post I mean on the way to me soon then I can meet up with James and we can do like the reveal and see who's got the best retro gaming Christmas related oddity. So you've seen us both hunt for our Christmas oddities join us later on to find out what we purchased in the reveal. Anyway moving on I've recently been giving some Christmas love to one of my favourite consoles of all time the Vectrix. So you join me here in the games room as I'm giving some Christmas love to one of my favourite consoles of all time, the mighty Vectrix. Now to help me do this I'm playing the Vectrix Xmas cart, which is a homebrew cart that was released by Binary Star Software. As far as I'm aware, the Vectrix Xmas cart was first made available by Binary Star Software for Christmas 2014, and it contained two Christmas themed games. Stocking filler, a game reminiscent of Kaboom by Activision, in which the player must fill their stocking with all the fallen presents while avoiding the fallen bombs. And Save the Trees, a fast paced shoot 'em up game of survival where the player must dodge or shoot fallen presents and snowmen when ensuring to destroy every bomb that falls before it reaches the bottom of the screen and ruins Christmas. As an extra bonus, the first 10 copies of the 2014 cart that were sold contained in their extra charge a modified cartridge with a USB connector to power a colour changing Christmas tree which could be sat on top of your Vectrix to make it look nice and festive. On December the 10th 2014, Binary Star Software announced that the 2014 Xmas cart was no longer available, but promised it would return for Christmas 2015. Following that announcement on December the 23rd 2014, Binary Star Software made the ROM of the Xmas cart available as a free download on its website for use with flashcards and emulators. As promised, Christmas 2015 seen the reprise of the Vectrix Xmas cart, once again containing two festive themed games. This time the games were... Parcel Panic, in which you play as one of Santa's helpers, using your grabbing arm to pick presents off the assembly line conveyor belts. And Space Tree X, the further adventures of the tree that saved Christmas, which is a fun shoot 'em up in the mold of Atari's asteroids. This time, a limited edition of just five cartridges were again made with a small LED Christmas tree that this time flashed in response to game events. These limited edition cartridges were awarded to five customers who all the numbers were chosen by random by computer. Also in 2015 you could buy a double pack which included the Xmas cart 2014 and an LED modded Xmas cart of the 2015 cartridge. As with the 2014 cartridge, the ROM of the 2015 cart was made available as a free download from the Binary Star software website on Christmas Eve 2015. Now the version of the Xmas cart that I'm playing here is one I've recently picked up off of eBay and it's neither the 2014 or the 2015 version because it's normally as it's stated just under here underneath where it says Xmas cart. Um, so I'm not sure whether this is actually anything to do with Binary Star software, whether someone's just downloaded the ROMs and put them onto a cart themselves. Uh, but either way it's a sort of compilation of both carts, it has all four games on it. Uh, it plays really well and they've done a really good job of the packaging, it really does look like what um, was released by Binary Star Software back in the day. So uh, yeah, I've been really pleased with it. Um, I think my favourite game is the one that's like Asteroids. Um, so like the way the, the ship actually whizzes and swerves around the screen is really cool. And I like Asteroids anyway, so that's probably the, the favourite game that's on this cart. And uh, yeah, it's really good for uh, giving your Vectrix some uh, Christmas love. So 
I'm just going to get on and play on a little bit more, if you'll excuse me. What a great little cartridge that was. It's great that there's still games being made for the Vectrex. I really need to buy one. I don't have one and they're only going up and up in value. Yeah, I, mean, I had a great time playing those games. Uh, they're sort of simple, easy to play games, but the sort of game that when you get playing them, you just don't want to put them down. Now that's the end of part one for the Retro Gamer Show, but don't go anywhere because we've got some very special Christmas adverts for you right now. The latest, greatest, ever more spectacular Woolworth, Woolworth Christmas, Christmas Show! show. EMI, Super Crow, tapes that come in freeze. Tell a tale, tape and book, helps a child to read. Five pack Sony tapes, the price is sure to please. Here, this brawn is independent, it'll style your hair with ease. Stupendous and amazing value in toys, I'll tell you. Fisher Price, here, that looks nice. The baby proof safe game. The speak and spell, that is correct, makes other toys look tame. And once they play with Vectrex, they'll never be the same. It's the latest, greatest, ever more spectacular Woolworth Christmas show. The ladies knitwear, look at them star bleeding, look at the colours, and all these for only five ninety nine each. Stupendous value. Hooray! Eric Bristow Dark Game, here, fancy meeting you. Video and TV units, self-assembly too. Remington's great popcorn maker, steady on there, lad. A colour set, remote control, here. Yeah. That can't be bad. <laughs> Big value quality sweet in a jar. Hurrah! Hurrah! Home computer, here, the Commodore. A gift set pack from Brute, what man could ask for more? A thousand lovely things to choose from, bargains galore. And a late, straight, ever more spectacular, Woolworth Christmas Show! the night before Christmas and all through the ship. Not a sensor was flashing, not even a blip. When there was a huge crash to the bridge I then ran, and there upon St. Nicholas with joystick in hand. With Atari's Miss Pac-Man he gobbled and scored, then on to Jungle Hunt he played till he roared. From out of his sack he pulled dozens of games, all the great ones from Atari, our favorite names. Before I could thank him he beamed out of sight. With a Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. There's a sensational range of gifts at Curry's now. A massive choice at unbeatable prices. Personal stereo at Curry's starts at an incredible $9.99. A Philips main shaver at a gift of a price, just $19.99. An exclusive brawn food processor deal with citrus juices and free blender. And a new Sinclair Spectrum Plus 2 with free joystick and software. Curry's. No one beats our prices. Guaranteed. It was the night before Christmas, and there in the house, the kitten discovered the new Commodore's mouse. Now touch the mouse to do what you choose. The mouse makes the Commodore simpler to use. Educate. Entertain. Put thoughts together. The world's best-selling family computer just got better. So bring home the new Commodore 64 now. A Commodore Christmas to all. And to all a... Uh... Have we done anything about the Christmas shopping yet, love? We? Don't worry. Ma, can I order? Go on. Who cares that you find just the right present for everyone? Who cares enough to put together a free gift guide? Full of good ideas. Well, we're going to have a bath. Who cares that you find just the right presents? So welcome back to part two of this festive edition of the Retro Gamer Show. Now while Colin's been playing his new Vectrex cartridge, I've been checking out what five festive games you need to play this Christmas. And first up on our great festive games list is Santa's Xmas Caper. Now this is on the Amiga. 
It came out in 1992 and was published by Zeppelin Games Limited. Santa's Xmas Caper on the Amiga is different from its 8-bit cousins. Instead of it being a side-scrolling shoot-em-up, it's a platform game. So the story of the game goes, while riding on his sled, Santa loses all his prezzies. The gifts get scattered all across the country, and yes, you've guessed it, you've got to travel around collecting all the presents. Once you've collected them all, an exit for the level opens and you move on to the next one. There's seven levels in total and each one is crowded with spiky pitfalls, slippery platforms and cute looking but nasty baddies. Santa's main weapon is the snowball and the baddies get stunned when you hit them, but only for a short time. And next up we've got a game on the Game Boy Color, it's Santa Claus Jr. Now in this game Santa has been kidnapped by an evil witch and your job as little Nick is to travel around collecting the presents so Christmas can be saved. The game was released in December 2001 and if you want to pick this up yourself you can find it on eBay cart only for about £5. And now it's just days before Christmas. Ah, do you see what I did there? Now Days Before Christmas is obviously a video game and it was developed by a Norwegian development company called Funcom. It was originally released by Sunsoft onto the Mega Drive in 1994 and it only came out in Australia. A version was also released for the Super NES both in Europe and Australia, however that gets a lot worse reviews. So if you're going to play this make sure it's the Mega Drive version, it's far superior. The North American Genesis release was planned, however it was cancelled. Because the Mega Drive version was only released in Australia and it didn't have a very big production run, so when this comes up for sale it usually commands a very high price. Now first, before I tell you a bit about this game, in case you don't already know what it is, I need to tell you about the game that came out prior to it. That was called Nights Into Dreams, and it was an action game developed by the Sonic team and published by Sega. Obviously this all came out on the Sega Saturn, and what a console that is. Now that I've told you that, this is Christmas Nights, or also known as Christmas Nights Into Dreams. The game only has two levels, but originally it was introduced in Japan in 1996 as part of a Christmas Sega Saturn bundle. Over here in the UK it was also given away with the Sega Saturn magazine and also another magazine called Next Generation. You also found it as well with Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition that also came out in 1996. The whole point behind this was to boost Sega Saturn sales over the Christmas period and I'm sure it actually did. When I was looking into the background behind this game, it turns out it was created in July 1996 and allegedly only took 4 months to make. But that's not surprising really considering they're just using the programming from the original game and just done a reskin to make it all Christmas themed. That being said though, it is a lot of fun and you need to play this game. Some people call me predictable and I'm proving them right with this at number one, it's Christmas Lemmings. This game started out as a four level demo back in 1991 and it was the greatest demo ever stuck to a magazine front cover. Later on it came out as a full retail release with 32 levels. It's definitely my favourite game to play over Christmas and that's why it's at number one. So there you go, that's five festive games that James thinks you should be playing this Christmas. And it's amazing when you stop and think about it, how many actually festive related games there are. Now it's time for part two of our Christmas challenge. Yes, and of course the rules were to go on eBay, buy something that's retro gaming related and it's a bit of an oddity, something you don't see every day. You also, of course with it being Christmas, it had to be Christmas related. And not only that, it had to be cost under a tenner. Now, let's go and find out what we bought in the reveal. So, it's time at long last for the reveal in our Christmas Retro Gaming Oddity competition. And uh, obviously we had a tenner to spend on eBay, so it was quite hard going. I don't know, did you find it quite hard going? I know I did. a couple I did. of ideas, yeah. um, but hopefully what I went for 
Uh, well, I think I've got the winner. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we will see. Yeah, let's see. It's, um, it's very competitive, isn't it? So, here's what I've come up with, and uh, I've been hiding it down here, and it is... Du -du 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 -du. Now, you might think it's a game, but it's not. This is, in fact, apparently, the world's first computer Christmas card. Okay. Now, apparently this was released, if I'm right in saying, I think in 1985, by Virgin Games. This is the uh, ZX Spectrum version. Um, there was a version for the Commodore 64, and okay. also I think there was a version for one of the Amstrad computers that was around at the time. So, uh, yeah, so this is, uh, let's like say, the world's, so say, first ever computer Christmas card, possibly the only ever. I don't know whether there's any others. Um, so, obviously, it came on cassette. It does have a game on the other side, so you've got like the Christmas card and you've got Space Command on the other side. Okay, so it's not just... Not just the Christmas card. Well. So, so how does it work then? Are you supposed to just... Well, if you have a look inside here... Give the here, tape to someone? Yeah, or? well, if you have a look inside here, you've got a bit actually in here that oh. says to... I'm wishing you Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and from. Okay. So I guess what you did is you actually package this up and send it to someone, obviously, who's got the, the right computer. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, there's no point. And then uh, what they do is they have to, it's got the instructions on the back and also on the inside here, but they load it up onto their computer. Um, and then they have to, it comes up, enter your name, so they'd have to enter okay. their name. So they have to do a little bit of work themselves. <laughs> so you don't like do it first and then record no. that it? That would have been good if yeah. you could, but I spent 1985. Yeah. It might right. have been a bit. So no, everyone had tape to tapes then. No, they? but you won't be able to record it, I suppose. No. Um, so, they, yeah, they have to type in their names. They've got to do a little bit of work themselves. And then, once they press enter, it would come up on the screen, Merry Christmas, and their name. Is that and all it did? No, and it played like a little um, sort of demo intro y thing uh, about Father Christmas coming. I'll tell you oh, what, okay. I managed to capture it on the 64, okay. 64 version. So, we take a look and we'll see what the, this thing actually did. So as you see there, uh, Father Christmas flew in on his sleigh, landed on the roof. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, he popped down the chimney and uh, filled the uh, stocking up. And then he'd uh, down the pint of Guinness that was waiting on the side for him. And then <laughs> stumbled around the living room looking a little bit drunk. Uh, maybe probably leaving uh, dirty footprints everywhere. Mm. And he sort of buggered off back up the chimney, onto his sleigh again and off to the next house. Um, not the best use of the Sid Chipper, no. the music's not great, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was, I suppose back in 1985, it was probably quite a strange and weird thing to get, probably the most dearest Christmas card you could buy at the time, but with the game on the second side, probably like a Christmas card mm. and a Christmas present combined, I suppose, and I did actually have a good idea of what you could have done, imagine if you were back in those days, 1985, you've got your own um, computer shop, so, you know, James, James ah, Micros or yes. something like that. You could stick a monitor in your window, oh, in your christmas cool theme window, put this on, and then people could see the little animation, and you could put, like I did in the when I put that on the uh, video clip, I put Merry Christmas Everyone, mm. you could put that, and you could put it in your window, and it'd be like the centrepiece of your Christmas display in your Christmas window. So, uh, uh, just a little cool idea uh, that you could have used it for. I don't expect anyone did, but 
You never know. So there we go, that's my entry into the little uh, competition that we're having. The world's first ever computer Christmas card. Right then James, so it's your turn to uh, reveal what you got for this little competition we're having and now. I'm really excited to see this. This is going to excite the Commodore fans. Well, I'm a Commodore fanboy alright. Me too. This is a little Commodore magazine from the Commodore show in 1989. So oh. a show they had in London. All about Commodore and there was loads of different um, exhibitors there. Ocean, all the big names. Now there's a rather jolly Santa on the front of this and he's hugging a A500 and two Commodore monitors. Mm, yeah. There's also the Batman the movie pack. There's a, what looks like a Batman belt on jolly Santa. Uh, he stood on a Commodore C64 light fantastic box. There's also a Commodore 64 box on the side as well but yeah, really happy Santa there with some kind of Batman belt. So they got the top um, two monitors. You got the top uh, Commodore kit on the cover there. That's it. So yeah, that's anyway. That's the uh, that's the front cover. A good old Santa smiling away. So I'm just going to read to you the foreword, and it says here, "Welcome once again to the 14th Commodore Christmas Show, one of the longest running shows around." This year, 1989, has seen some challenges in the nature of the show. For the first time, we've organised the show ourselves with the assistance of Peter Bremold of IPT, who is managing the logistics of running the exhibition. Capital Radio DJ David Jensen, oh, yeah, David P. Jensen yeah. is coming to open the show, and throughout the three days, he'll be raising money for Capital Radio's Help a London Child campaign. There will be a balloon race. The sender of the winning balloon will get an A500 as the prize. The person who sends in the winning ticket will also get a prize. Mm. Doesn't say what that is, but you can imagine it's Commodore related, of course. Commodore so, cheering. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it could be something like that. We have Santa's Grotto with presents for the children and some surprise gifts, such as colour televisions, Yamaha keyboards, and personal stereos. Yeah, how much does it cost to go and see Santa? 150, 200 quid? I don't know, <laughs> but like that's that. some proper good prices. Yeah. It's not I like your local, um, local, your local garden centre or something. Center. Yeah, yeah no. and, you know, I bet like, what they did is they sort of the house out there and there'd be like just Joe Bloggs kids comes in and it's like, give him a mouse motor yeah, key ring. And they give him a mouse motor key ring and then like, be, Commodore staff, yeah. kid coming in, get the big keyboard out. <laughs> The son of the ocean director got yeah. a keyboard. Yeah. As market leader in the country on home and leisure computers, we will showcase our range of machines, the PC-10, the Commodore C64, and the amazing Amiga 500, running a range of games, applications, music, and educational software. You've got to have the educational software <laughs> to make the parents buy it. We will also be featuring the music capabilities of the Amiga 500 on the Commodore stand with our staff demonstrating and playing. We will also be expecting some special guests performing live. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd gone to this because this would have been absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah, I'd have to have gone to it as well and I could read all this out. All in, uh, all in there will be a fun time for all the family and a chance to see the biggest range of home and small business computers available in the UK and to try them out with the most up-to-date software. There will also be computers and software on sale from our distributors and dealers and demonstrations of all the products. So why, you know, why, why not have everything for sale? Yeah, you're going to see it, you're going to want it, you're going to want it, buy it there and then and come home. But it's interesting that it says for the whole family, so it obviously like, wasn't just like a trade event or anything like that, it was like no. a, a show for the whole family. Which yeah, everyone excited. Didn't know Commodore did though, so like I said, they left to go. It was their 14th show, yeah. so that's, that's pretty epic. And that's uh, was that written by sort of Steve? Steve Franklin, who was the managing director at the time. Mm. So um, yeah, it looks like, so they had previous events run by another company and now they've gone Done it on their own. Yeah, and got some help. And David Kid Jensen. Yeah. Off of the telly and the radio, of course. But yeah, top of the pops. Uh, right, what else is in here? There's a picture of David Kid Jensen yeah. looking all happy, smiling. Obviously, he's in it for the charity. <laughs> so um, hopefully, they made lots of money for that charity. And there's various gubbings and screen pictures of different Amiga 
items, they've got the A500 hard drive. Always wanted one of those, but they were crazy money. As, yeah, special reserve. Batman pack, three five nine ninety nine, including vat and carriage. Mm -hmm. And there's a floor plan. It shows the various um, exhibitors. There's MST Maverick software. Remember them? Oh, Microdeal, remember them? Yep, Microdeal. Ocean, of course we mentioned them. Memory systems expansions. Yep, mm. them. And uh, there's some adverts for some gen capture device for for your TV and video work. Loads of companies here. Amiga Action had a stand. So that was good. Bath Computer Shack. Mm. Not far from us, never heard of it, but it's not far HLC from us. HLC Road, Lower Western. Mm. Yeah, I wonder if it's uh, still there selling Amiga stuff. Yeah. I imagine it isn't, but what a shame. And anyway, more adverts and the bit I was getting to. Now there is a sh uh, an actual quiz. I was <laughs> going to say a show quiz. It's a quiz. It's a quiz at the show, right? right? Now it says, so you think you're clever. Now you pretty much had to be to answer this because there is blocks of questions. So you think you're clever. If so, can you answer the following questions and you could win a two meg Amiga 500. We're not on about the 512 expansion, 2 so meg. That would have been crazy in That would have been, but... yeah. You would have been filling that RAM disk <laughs> faster than you were wishing it was Christmas Day. <laughs> anyway, there's questions like here, there's a whole batch here. Name three software houses present at the show. Which company organised the show? Oh, well, we knew that because uh, we're at the yeah. beginning. So. What do the initials ICPUG stand for? And who originally conceived the Amiga? So yeah, there's another batch of questions that you've got to answer as well. Make it harder? Uh, I think so. How much RAM was the basic machine supplied with? Mm. I suppose all the answers are probably in the uh, brochure there if you yeah. go through it. This, is, this would make a great separate video, wouldn't it? It would. It, but <laughs> Christmas quiz, like the Retro Hour do. But yeah, this, uh, Commodore was founded in 1957, true or false? Mm. Where is the head office of Commodore UK? Who is the managing director uh, of Commodore? We've already well, mentioned Yeah, that, we so. have mentioned. Uh, but yeah, some, some really cool questions. So uh, that would make a good quiz um, for you guys to run through. So yeah, hopefully we'll And then we'll, when you get we'll to the end, you're not screen. just happy with that. You've also got the say, was it, in how many words? Yeah, that's it. So to win this 2 meg Amiga 500, yeah, you've also got a... Do the mar do the marketing for Commodore, and in in fifteen words, no more, you've got to explain why the Commodore Amiga is the best computer. Because it is. Commodore computers are the best because fifteen words go. Because they are. They are the best. Because <laughs> they are the best. Yeah. And I don't think that would have won. I was a winner that. I would have gone down the lines of okay, this is just off the top of my head. It's the only versatile computer with the most exceptional educational packages <laughs> as well as office applications and don't forget games. Mm. I think that might be over 15, but anyway, yeah. I would have gone down <laughs> some kind of like route like that. But yeah, there we go. Now, before I go, I do have a special surprise for you. Right. I did, I mentioned this guy on the front, Jolly Santa, hugging a Batman the movie as well as some other Commodore stuff. Now, take a close look. Yeah. And do you recognize that guy? Do you recognize Santa? Um, he looks a bit like Jeremy Beadle. No. Or, um, actually, thinking about it, when I think back to some of the, remember some of the magazine pictures I see, actually he looks a bit like David Pleasance. Now, that's what I thought. All right. So, <laughs> I took a picture of this <laughs> yeah. and I tweeted, David Pleasance. Former managing director, of course, of Commodore UK. That's it, who we met recently. Yeah. Uh, met several times before. And he replied with this tweet. Ah. And it was him. God. And as, you, as you can see on the tweet, he so was this his, like, always looking for the limelight. Yeah. But was this his, like, because this was before, obviously before he was managing director. Yeah, so yeah, they So maybe that was, was like uh, his, his foot in the Steve door. Steve Frank, yeah, so yeah, he uh, he obviously... From from Santa at the Christmas show to managing director it. UK, 
in what about six years or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, he 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 yeah, he'd replaced the old MD. Yeah. So yeah, thumbs up for David Pleasant. Right, so I suppose now we've got to decide somehow who's going to be the winner and um a bit hard for us just to sort of say ourselves because I obviously think mine's the best, you think yours is the best. So we thought we'd leave it to you guys and uh, maybe you can let us know in the comments to this video who you think won. So is it me with my first ever, world's first ever uh, computer Christmas card? Or is it Or you? me with my Commodore show catalogue? Yeah, that's actually pretty good. I'm pretty impressed actually. I thought I was uh, way ahead of you in the stakes there of this... Uh, Christmas card, but that's actually pretty this good. This is so. a great little magazine. I'm, I'm well chuffed. Yeah, so uh, I think we've done all right for under a tenner. It's quite, quite, hard, it's quite a challenge, you know, sort of thing. So, mm. uh, yeah. So, anyway, let us know in the comments and uh, we'll let you know in the next episode of the Retro Gamer Show who won. So, there you go. That's the end of our little Christmas challenge. We hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget to let us know in the comments who you think was the winner. And uh, yeah, that brings us to the end of this very festive edition of the Retro Gamer Show. We hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks so much to everyone who supported us throughout the year. It's really been a brilliant year for retro gaming. Everyone who commented on the last video, as always, their names are going to be scrolling across the bottom of the screen now. But anyway, we'll be back in the new year with another Retro Gamer Show. But until then, James, what have they got to do? Happy Christmas, everyone, and keep it retro. Mm -hmm.